Everybody always freaks out about hard geometry questions, but hard geometry questions are just like two or three easy geometry questions stuffed together into one. So that's how you have to think of it, because we're just gonna break it down into simpler parts. So let's start by drawing what they said. A rectangle is inscribed in a circle, so okay. Here's my circle. A rectangle is inscribed such that each vertex of the rectangle lies on the circumference. Okay, so just, I don't know, just draw a rectangle here. So there's one part, there's another, there's another. It's gonna look more like a square, but that's okay. Um, okay, you might wanna throw a little right angle in there just to remind yourself. Um, the diagonal of the rectangle, so let's do another color here. The diagonal of the rectangle, so that's this, and that's gonna go through the center, is twice the length of the shortest side of the rectangle. So if you have trouble understanding what that means, we're gonna to have to use X's, right? So we're gonna have to say that this is twice the length of the shortest side, so X and two X. The area of the rectangle is uh, 1089 root three square units. So we'll deal with that later, okay. Um, what is the length in units of the diameter of the circle? So we're, this, I love this question because I, I said we have to break a question down into its smaller, easier geometry questions. And every geometry question basically is composed of some combination of the three most important shapes, circles, rectangles, and triangles. And look what we have here, all three. Circle, rectangle, that was told to us. But by drawing that, that diagonal, we made a triangle, and that's super important. So obviously, there must be some way that we can get the sides here. Now, I guess I can put this here, right? We know the area of a rectangle, let's use a different color. The area of a rectangle is length times width, so that's going to be, in this case, uh, the 1089 root 3. So there's some messiness in here, but that doesn't bother me. In fact, the fact that there's a root 3 tells me I'm probably going to need to use one of the special right triangles. And this is why we really can't get flustered when we get to weird stuff. Remember, the reference chart exists. So if you are having difficulty figuring out how to solve a question, open that reference chart and just kind of look at it like a menu. Like, is there anything on this menu that matters? Probably not any of this stuff. We're not dealing with 3D shapes, right? So maybe all these things about circles, rectangles, and triangles matter. And sure enough, if we look at the special triangles, this is always such a great place to go, we're gonna see a couple things. We see the root three, so maybe that matters. But I also see a two X and an X, right? Like. This is why just writing that down on the picture, even though you might not know how it's gonna help you, is a good idea. Now, you could still find the width or length of this rectangle, right? Because we have the, the width we're gonna call x. We could find the length by doing Pythagorean theorem. But that's gonna take more time. It's much better to try to look for these kind of situations, right? So what's happening here is we know it has to be this 30, 60, 90 triangle because if we have this relationship, it's, it's just gotta be the way that the other one is uh, x root three. It's just how it goes. So, um, you know, I know that from experience, but it's also one of those cases where it's like, you don't need much experience with hard geometry questions to realize that special right triangles are like all over the place. Anytime we have a weird shape, it's probably a special right triangle, or at the very least, it's just a regular triangle. So make triangles, that's usually a good idea. Now what this lets us do is we're not really interested in the diagonal to use the, the area, we're much more interested in um, the relationship between the length and the width. So we have the width is x, I'm gonna say the length is x root three, and that is easy to then compare to the, uh, 10, oh, 1089 root three, so that's gonna be x squared root three, right? So if I multiply those things together, I get x squared root three. So the root three that looks scary doesn't even matter here. I just have that x squared is equal to 1089. So just take the square root of that. Let's see what we get. Uh, square root of 1089 is 33. I love it when it's a nice number. And what that lets us do is fill in everything, right? So now we have that this here is 33. This here is 33 root three, and this is 66. And what do they want? The diameter of the circle is 66 because that's also the diagonal of the rectangle. Um, hopefully you drew your picture such that that was obvious, but if not, like, come on, like what else is it gonna be, right? Like this is kind of like, you, you're only, you're out of options here. It, it kind of has to take that path. That's the simplest path. It has to go that way. Um, so again, I really love this question. It is not hard if you've done any other advanced geometry questions because even though you've probably never seen one exactly like this, you keep working with the same pieces. Area, volume, 
rectangles, triangles, circles, it's all the same few things just combined in different ways. So it's a very important way to think about the entire SAT, but I think geometry in particular really lends itself to just like make those basic shapes, use the basic formulas, they're all given to you, there's really no excuse. The problem is you people freak out and they just, they're like, oh, I've never seen it like this before, I don't know how to solve this. But you gotta break it down. Just look for familiar shapes and odds are good you'll be able to find your way somewhere, somehow to the answer.